In The Master, Joaquin Phoenix's character is shown hanging in such a way as to illustrate his state of being adrift in life, simply carried by the wind to wherever it may blow. In Blow Up, the circular shape of the magnifying glass contrasts with the rectangular shape of the negatives and deforms them into other circular shapes. This represents how protagonist Thomas is reshaping reality to fit his own distorted obsession. He visually turns rectangles into circles in the same way as his mind turns a romantic moment into a murder scene. In the shot from Vertigo, the patterns over the fireplace are similar to those created by the curtains. This visual repetition fits perfectly with the movie's plot. The curtains represent Scotty's relationship with Madeline, which was genuine and free, while the fireplace stands for the hard, stony and etched relationship between Scotty and Judy. These long stairs to nowhere in Fellini's Eight and a Half represent the protagonist's daydreams that take him to the clouds, when he should instead experience the immediate world around him and the people in his present. Helped by the starburst effect of the spotlights, this adds a sense of surreal, oniric imagery to the story. In Andrei Tarkovsky's masterpiece Stalker, sand fills the screen all the way up to 65% of its height. This symbolizes an hourglass, emphasizing how trapped the characters feel and visually representing how much of the movie's runtime has elapsed, being this shot at the 1 hour and 45 minute mark, precisely 65% into the film. This shot from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf has a light bulb swinging over George's head. It is the classical association of the light bulb with an idea. Here, the idea of murdering his wife haunts George, moving from one side to the other without ever settling down and having the crime come into fruition. This shot from Chiaro's thumb is through the olive trees captures the natural beauty of the rural landscapes to create contrast with the difficult lives of the characters, highlighting themes of hope, perseverance and the struggle for a better life. Wong Kar Wai shot fallen angels with shallow depth of field and giddy camera work to signify the lead character's immaturity and lack of knowledge of the real world. The presence of nature in The Sound of Music's opening number alludes to the ancient history of the Alps region and therefore suggests the violent conflicts between the Romans and the Celts, implying the conflict that will appear later in the story. Here in Dreyer's Day of Wrath, smoke represents humanity leaving the earth as the witch trials are carried out. The Inquisitor's wife watches from behind the window to show how separated she is from the brutality in display, indicating her purity and innocence. Marcello, protagonist of The Conformist, is a closeted homosexual, as can be interpreted in this scene by the presence of the Eiffel Tower, a clear phallic symbol. As he waves his wife goodbye, he is also greeting the true object of his desire. In this iconic scene from Casablanca, the shapes of lead couple Rick and Ilsa are clearly akin to the phallus, indicating the character's latent homosexuality. You see this guy? Right here? is gay, also gay, gay, super gay. In this scene, the character of Lisa dons a necktie on her head, indicating how she and not Johnny holds power in the relationship, and she creatively subverts it by wearing the traditionally masculine item in a novel way. In this moment from Scream, Randy refuses to look behind him all the while he repeatedly tells the movie character he's watching to do so. Look behind you. Look behind you. This is a clear representation of straight white men's hypocrisy and adamant refusal to face racism. The character of Ghostface obviously represents racism and aided by the curved angle, which signifies a skewed prejudice worldview, this scene is a brilliant illustration of how straight white men allow racism to be perpetuated in society. Here in a chorus line, the characters are arranged precisely in the order they are going to die. John Waters' work of art Pink Flamingos is brilliantly shot in an unpolished documentary-like style to simulate the flawed point of view of typical everyday bourgeois moviegoers, who look upon the film's marginalized characters without the respect they crave and deserve. Here, characters are faced by the camera at an angle of 56 degrees, being 56 the periodic number of barium. 
Look at how Matt Damon looks at that piece of paper. It's like Charlemagne facing the Magna Carta. If you don't cry, you are not a human. This painting here represents loneliness. This one, effectiveness. This one is conciseness, this one constipation. And this painting stands for the Polish Constitution of 1997. And together they combine to form the ghost of Alfred the Great. Secret passage just opened behind me. My point is, in case it's not clear, interpretations are a dime a dozen. I just took a bunch of random shots from random movies and pulled meaning out of my ass. That one from Through the Olive Trees I took from ChatGPT and I have to say, I actually quite like the hogwash I made up about those shots from Vertigo, Blow Up and especially Virginia Woolf and that's the danger of interpretations. They are fun and seductive, but ultimately they're as empty as these vast spaces representing the character's isolation from society and his inner self. Of course, some images can be interpreted, but I believe it's only the most obvious ones. Bars representing lack of freedom, for example. Just don't go too far, stick to the story. If a director himself says there's a certain meaning, good to know. But I wouldn't give it that much value. There's no way to know the intended meaning behind every shot of every film of every director. If the shot doesn't speak for itself, it probably has nothing to say. Don't be Freud or Robert Langdon. If you look for meaning, you will find it. The best we can do is just point out what's on screen and what's the story. And trust me, that's perfectly good enough. Oh, and that crap I made up about the sand in Stalker. I did the math, the sand really does go up to 65% of the screen's height and that shot really does come 65% into the runtime. I don't know what to do with that information.